Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwander and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today we have the pleasure of speaking with Vijay Sundaran. He is Chief Strategy Officer of Soho. Welcome, Vijay. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So tell us about the secret sauce of Soho. How big is the company? The company is about 6,000 people right. uh, worldwide. And what makes it so special? It's, uh, it's evolved a culture that has been deeply intertwined with, uh, with certain strong philosophical principles in life and the role that our own software has in enshrining some of those principles. So as an example, we are a company that, is, that tends to be non-credentialist. You know, that was a fundamental belief in the founding, uh, in, in our CEO, that you don't measure people by, by their, their labels or their degrees. And a firm belief that I can build highly com competent workforce by not following that model. So we've seen that happen in the company and we've seen our technology support people who don't have those credentials and allow them to be successful. So both have worked somewhat symbiotically. So can you uh, separate for me the, uh, the way you look at corporate culture, the way you look at technology, and the way both work together to create a highly productive organization? That's a wonderful question. And let me take the second part first. The way you look at technology. You know, we are a software company, and as you know, we have a whole range of software, 40 plus products. And there's the fundamental notion of, of what we do in software is making it completely accessible for anybody. So what does that mean? That means there's an inherent simplicity in being able to use it. There's, uh, you, you price it and make it affordable in a certain way. Uh, you, you refrain from uh, from, uh, from marketing and hype that makes it accessible or makes it seem like this is the prerogative of, of large companies with deep pockets. So that's a fundamental philosophy underlying our technology. Make something ubiquitous that anybody on the planet from the multinational company to your plumber can actually use the software and get their work done. That's a fundamental core belief. So. Along with that comes with the way, the people side of it. And the people side of the, of, of the, of the thinking is, we build a culture of, of, of people who, who basically rise up in the organization and enable things, not because of the, the entitlements they came with or with the, with the degrees or, 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 or titles that they came with, but they've made a name because they've embrace this technology and they found that they work with, they emerge as leaders. They actually make things happen. And so we actually have, in our company, we even have a program where we get kids right out of high school. We do this in our India office. They have no degrees at all. They come, we take them into, uh, uh, into a unit that we call Zoho University, put them through a program for about a year and a half and train them in a few things, you know, to, to allow them to make them successful software engineers. Uh, and and then allow them to shadow somebody who's actually a productive engineer or a support person or whatever, right? Shadow somebody for a, for a year, sit with them, and we find that within a period of four to five years, these people are indistinguishable from anybody with a formal degree from any institution. So many of them are. And many of them rise up because they've never had an opportunity like this. Many of them have a higher degree of motivation than somebody like me who might have come from a place of privilege or with a few degrees under their belt. And so they're more eager to make a name for themselves, more eager to show what they can do, more eager to take initiative. So we've seen that evolve and, and develop the way the company has actually evolved over time. So you are, you're creating, if, correct me if I'm wrong, a, a system where people can uh, learn on the job and, uh, and then perform and based on their merits, um, you can, uh, you know, moving, uh, move them high up the hierarchy and, uh, and give them even more opportunities to learn more. 
So you're creating a ladder of success that is totally different from uh, the American model. Yeah, there are a few things you do, and I, some of them may be uh, different from a classic command and control model that has evolved in, right. in, in most of our Western models. Uh, but you, you touched on it when you talked about on-the-job learning. And that's, uh, let's call that informal learning. You know, so it doesn't come through degrees. It's not best taught on right. you by some institution. Right. It's, it's what you figure out because you work with people. But you need several things to make this, this, uh, this instrument work. You need the ability, first of all, you should be open to taking people without credentials. Second, you need to create a culture where they do something material, where decisions are handed down to them, where the organization behaves in a decentralized way, where silos and where you people can participate and you don't even know where they are in the hierarchy or what group they come from, but they can be contributing to a marketing idea. You know? So the organization has to cultivate that. So that's the second peg. So you hire people a certain way, you create that kind of decentraliz decentralization and ability to participate, and then you reward people independent of, of, again, their credentials based on what they do. So when you put these two or three things together, that system builds on itself. You know, a few people emerge from that, then the next generation of people watch that and say somebody was successful and they didn't come from some name brand place or, or come with this, uh, you know, with some title, uh, uh, with some with some title that they could uh, uh, stand on. But they built they built their reputation this right. way. In some ways, learning on the job is not unlike in some place. In some ways, it's actually happened in the Western world. Take an example of Germany. Yes. Germ Germany the has apprentice system. Appre exactly. Yeah. They have the apprentice right. program and they basically put people on the job and they learn and and you see right. in 50 years right. after World War how right. Germany became a leader and, uh, in some industry. It's the same at UPS where a truck driver can become president or exactly. CEO. Exactly. Right. Because you see the distribution system, right. you see the problems right. and you're able to do right. it. So it's a similar system. So we have plenty of leaders in our company who may not even have degrees. Right. Or we have leaders in the company who are, who work with other people who, who may be on paper more qualified, right. something that wouldn't normally right. happen right. in an organization. Well, thank you, Vijay. We are going to continue our conversation where we focus more on Soho and how people process and technology can be integrated better for better results. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you.